All right. So we got more fallout from the Super Eagles poor showing over the last international break. Of course, those World Cup qualification matches against South Africa and Banner Republic. We drew with South Africa one all at home. Then we lost the Banner Republic by two goals to one. Um, that was away from home. And it basically leaves the host to qualify hanging by a thread. And it also leads us to our breaking news on the day. Actually, we got two things to talk about. The first one is news. Finiti George, head coach of the team, resigns from his position as, um, of course, head coach of the team. Then we got this Victor Seaman versus Finiti George saga that we're going to talk about real quick. Uh, but before all that, though, please make sure to like this video. It's really important. helps the channel grow. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much. And we're going to start with this Finiti George resignment. Or is it resignment? Is that a word? But anyway, Finiti George resigning from his position as head coach of the Super Eagles. This comes after like three months in charge. He was hired in April. Of course, he was coaching. He was the assistant coach of the team before he took the job as the head coach. Had those intern matches against Ghana and Mali. Of course, we defeated Ghana by two goals to one. Then the honeymoon was over when we took on Mali. We lost that match by two goals to nil. And of course, we just spoke about the last two results that put us in a horrible position as to qualifying for the World Cup. But um, yeah, Finiti George no longer with the team. Let me know your thoughts on the situation. Put it in the comment section. Now, first of all, I don't think Finiti George like just went in there and was like, hey, I'm going to resign. I think that it was kind of a situation where they told him, okay, resign so we don't have to fire you. Because you got to think about it. He did have a meeting not too long ago with a whole bunch of executives talking about the Super Eagles. So that might have been the outcome. Not that I'm saying I know this for a fact, but I'm just thinking the way it looks. You have a long meeting, and next thing you know, maybe a day or two later, you resign from the job. So it might have been a situation like, hey, just resign so we don't have to make you look bad with the firing. But that being said... I kind of felt like Finiti George was getting scapegoated for a while there. Um, if you look at that match against Banner Republic, come on now. That first goal that we conceded, preschool, preschool. And you're talking about our most, you know, not accomplished, but our highest profile defender. The one that starts night in, night out in the EPL, probably day in, day out. But, but you know what I mean. He starts like all Fulham's games in the EPL. And look at what he did. That was just preschool. You allow the ball just to be taken away. You could have cleared that ball like a year ago. Like on my last birthday, you could have cleared that ball. You took all that time, ball taken away from you. And next thing you know, Stanley Wabali has to pick the ball out the back of the net. Now that second goal, a set piece, that's on the coach. We give that on, we put that on the coach. But just lead into that second goal you could see them you could see them that they were scared they were like you were nigerians you were the super eagles playing banner and pup the squirrels for god's sake and you're scared just because you conceded one goal you just everybody was flat it was, i was like i was praying like god take us to halftime so we could just be one one but what do you know third minute of at a time they scored that goal and we couldn't even get one back in the second half. We came out, we tried everything. The coach put in new players, did this, did that. It didn't work. And what I'm just saying with this is we need to look in the mirror. Everybody needs to look in the mirror. Don't just think because the coach has resigned. Woohoo, we're off the hook. No, you're not. You need to look in the mirror and find out. How you get a call to the Super Eagles and come and play trash like that? That was horrendous from those players. I don't want to hear it. Oh, uh, this is uh, uh, Benjamin Tamin who plays in Tanzania. He was better than your player that plays in the EPL. Yes, he was. He was He was so much better than Calvin Bassey on the day, both days. So don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't try to scapegoat. Oh, he put in a guy from the EPL. Uh, what was the other guy doing? Don't, don't do that. 
these players, everybody needs to look in the mirror. All that scapegoating, that's what that's what leads us into these type of situations. When you, you throw other players under the bus and, and you put you put this player on a pedestal. That's what leads us into a player thinking he's all that and his fart doesn't stink. That's what leads us into all that. So we need to all just look in the mirror and do better. It's not just about the coach being gone and things are going to be better. Like, who are they going to bring? They're going to bring Pep Guardiola or, or, or my guy from Bayern Leverkusen. They're going to bring him, Xavi Alonso. They're going to bring him. You're going to bring an old dude that's not done anything in his life. Probably a type like, like no disrespect to Pacero. I love them as head coach for the Super Eagles. But my man, all he had was a title with Al Halley. I swear I can win that title. I can win a title with Al Halley, especially at those times. You're talking about the best team in Egypt. One and two, Al Halley and Zamalek. You can always, anybody can win a title with Al Halley. And you bring that man in. Oh, he's supposed to be. Look, what I want to say is this. Find your coach. I don't want to hear all that uh, he got to be from you. Find you a coach. We got good coaches on the continent, even if it's a gun in, even if it's from, from Cameroon. Find you a coach. All this all this nonsense. You go go bring some, some old dude from Europe and, and you feel like everything is solved. Find you a good coach. That's, that, that's what I got to say about that situation. But moving on to the final issue. And this heat that I got on me is kind of good for this issue right here because we're talking about Finiti George's situation with uh, Victor Seaman. So I guess yesterday or may I don't know. I saw it, but I really, I honestly just saw the the, the, the little report and I, I just brushed it off. They said uh, Finiti George was talking about the team and he said um, he can't force Victor Seaman to come play for the Super Eagles. He said he always picks and chooses his match. This is what the report is saying he's saying. So today I'm guessing Victor Seaman hops on his Instagram live and discusses the issue. Well, not discusses, uh, kind of rants about the issue. But Victor Seaman, that's my guy though. Um, the same thing that makes you great makes you look bad sometimes. That's just the truth of life. And um, yeah, he kind of looked bad just yelling. And, you know, he, he was right. If that's what was said, but like this is Nigerian news, Victor Seaman and the rest of you, a lot of stuff comes out and it really has no backbone. Uh, there was a time we missed the World Cup. They said there was a orgy with Super Eagles players before the match, and they were like, "Yeah, that's why we lost." Okay, where where your how do you prove that? Do you have a picture of the players coming of the women coming out of the players' hotel? Do you have something? Nothing like that came out. But, you know, that report just was meant to just, you know, pacify some people. At least you got something to say, oh, this is the reason why. So, I say that to say it's not for a fact that uh, Finiti George said that. And even just looking at Finiti George, watching him, I don't think he's that type of guy to throw somebody under the bus like that. But let's just keep it in the air. It could have been said, but Victor Seaman comes and he talks about the situation. He said he got hurt in the final match of the season against Lecce. Of course, Lecce, a Serie A club just like Napoli. But um, he said he got injured like the final minute of the match against Lecce, uh, ankle injury. And he said when he went to see his doctor, in Germany, he talked to Finiti George, you know, after getting that result that he had to sit out for a few weeks. So he said he talked to Finiti George, he had somebody recording. So basically he has all the evidence that he told Finiti George with his doctor present that this is um, what it was. And he also said that he offered to come into camp. He offered that, um, he told the coach to call him in, let him come into camp, let him be with his teammates and um, try to motivate him in that way. But the coach told him, nah, it's better that you stay with your family. And um, I think that's the part that kind of got Victor heated up right there because not that he told him to stay with his family, but the fact that he had that conversation with you and you told him to stay away, then all of a sudden, this comes up you're saying that hey this guy is picking his matches and things like that and if you had brought him to camp that excuse was never going to be there so you start feeling like 
Did he tell me to stay away from camp just so he can say I pick and choose my matches? Um, so you can kind of understand where Victor is coming from. But like I said, you never know. This is Nigeria now. A lot of people just put out those reports. You know what's going to bring the news, what's going to do the clickbait. So a lot of people put out things like that for clickbait. And um, it's not right, but it's something that is done. I'm just putting that out there. Now, one thing I got from that situation, that live, was he got some good people on his side because when he was going too far, I saw in the comment section, you see uh, Odeon and Gallo, like, I understand, but get off, get off, you know, get off the internet, get off that phone. And um, even the people that were with him, he was angry at them, and they were still like, bro, get off that phone, and I respect that. He needs to keep those people around him because those are good people. You even have one guy that he kind of trained to head, but if I heard right, and uh, I think the guy's name is Mike or something like that. Mike, you a good man. And um, Victor, you need to keep Mike on your side. And by the way, Victor, your eye socket has like, um, what do they call it? Steel in it. Man, you can't headbutt nobody. <laughs> That's probably why the guy was like, yeah, 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 you're going to headbutt me with your broken head. So I, I feel like he has some good people around him. Um, I Like I said, I don't think Finiti George said that. I just, I just don't see it in his character to come out and say something like that. You're talking about a player that played in Europe, that played at the highest level. I don't think Victor Seaman has got to where Finiti George was. Definitely hasn't when you're talking about club level. Um, of course, Champions League winner with Ajax probably, not probably, was was seen as unanimously the best winger in the world at one time. So this is a player that, you know, so I just, I hate this whole situation. And um, I feel like our next coaching search, if you want to get a Nigerian, get somebody that's not a, that's not a legend, man. Uh, I'm sorry to my legends, man. Go go Europe and find a job, man. Because I, I don't like all this. I don't like this. I don't like this. People talking down on somebody that I looked up to as a child. It hurts my soul to hear a lot of that stuff. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, you look back at Stephen Keshi the way it ended. Come on, that's the big boss. It, it, big boss is not even about coaching. It's about him as a player. He was the big boss. So, yeah, that... That it leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Even somebody like Sundo Lee say I, I also was not too happy with him with the Vincent and yeah my situation and also how everything ended. Um, definitely wasn't happy about that. But that's a legend. That's a legend. That's somebody that we looked up to growing up. So for for things that I'm not I'm not a fan of all that. So we need to look at all these other coaches that didn't play for the Super Eagles. We got some great coaches that didn't play for the Super Eagles. By the way, Fidel Sile Chuku, you get the Oracle Manga Ogumbote. You got Abdul Maikaba, Kennedy Boboye. Um, you got a whole bunch of Nigerian coaches that do a good job. But let me know your thoughts about all this right here. Put it in the comment section. And of course, please make sure to like this video, subscribe, share. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.